normally uh, Mike goes first and then I don't actually get to speak so uh, we're gonna try <laughs> me going first so I'm gonna skip past all this employment stuff ah, not to do the intellectual property so um, and Mike, Mike, feel free to interrupt as I go because I tend to interrupt him just so I can get a word in edgewise during the presentation. <laughs> so uh, first of all, I guess here's the things I want to talk about today. Just to give us a bit of an IP vocabulary so we're all talking about the same thing when we talk about patents versus trademarks versus any of the other rights. Uh, some of the costs and benefits of registering your intellectual property and why you might or might not do that. James, do you like to Sorry. Yeah, uh, then um, what's the most applicable and valuable for your business of these different kinds of intellectual property given the state of your business and what your future plans are. Uh, a, a slide I call miscellaneous traps for the unwary. These are just things that have come up over and over and over again for me over the years. And then finally, Mike, Mike's whole presentation is called five intellectual property or five, five labor takeaways. So I throw in the five takeaways <laughs> as a bonus on, on my presentation. So here's, uh, here's a little slide on what the, uh, the different kinds of intellectual property are. So patent, um, you know, I think is a very complex area. Uh, um, we're probably not going to spend a lot of time on that today, but, but certainly something that protects the idea that is uh, um, of, of the product or how it's manufactured or of a business process. This is a very specialized area. And so we'll just talk about a very little bit about patents. Copyrights is where most of our conversation will be today, or a good chunk of it, because so much of what you do is subject to copyright. The photographs, the, uh, the descriptions, the websites you prepare, the software that you, you uh, write or, or take a license to, it's all copyright. And the, the original owner of the copyright in, uh, um, in anything is typically the author, with one exception being an employee creating something in the ordinary course of their employment, that's part of their job is to create that, then, then the employer owns that by right, but not in the case of contractors. We're going to come to that. Uh, trademarks are important. That's, that's uh, your, your reputation, the, what your product or your, or your company goes by, where your goodwill comes from, and the rights to that are available to the person who's the first to adopt it. I use that in quotes because uh, it's the first to file a trademark application or the first to use it in a very technical sense is the owner of the copyright or the, the trademark in a work. Industrial designs if, protects the ornamentation of an object that's going to be produced more than 50 times. I'd, uh, uh, that's a, another, it's like patents, a, a complex discussion. And then trade secrets, cop, um, confidentiality is an important part of everybody's business too. And there's no registration for that. Uh, and it can last forever as long as you protect it properly. Yeah. I was wondering where taglines fit in. Is that a copyright or a trademark? That's a trademark. trademark? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Would you be able to provide us with these slides? Uh, I'm I'm happy to have them yeah, provided. Them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Uh, there's a couple of promotional ones at the end, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, why register your uh, intellectual property rights and some of the costs and benefits? So I mentioned patents cost tens of, tens of thousands of dollars. They're enforceable only on registration. Um, I'm not going to go into that in any detail. Copyrights are very cheap. You can register that just by filing a document uh, with the Canadian Intellectual Property Office. The registration fee is 25 bucks. There's no examination, so they'll register whatever you send them. Uh, and there are some benefits to registration, including there's a presumption you own the copyright and the registered copyright and someone has to actually defeat that if there's a dispute. There's, so there's some good benefits there. Trademarks cost usually a couple thousand dollars and a year or so to register. Um, there are some significant benefits to registering a trademark. So I, I mentioned that it's first to file or use is the owner of, the, of a trademark. And when I say use, um, you, you, get a, you get the rights to that trademark where you have a local reputation. So if your business is focused in a single area, I think, you know, the, the veterinary services, you have a client base that you're drawing from that area. Where you have that local reputation, that's where um, you have protection for that name. No one else can use it in that area. Uh, if someone else wanted to start a similar business two provinces over with the identical name, uh, they probably could. Right? There's no reason they couldn't. Uh, and so if you want to get Canadian-wide rights to your name, you want to file and register your trademark. And that applies, it's mainly on a country-by-country -country basis for the most part. So you're going to want to, uh, as you think big, 
um, think about where those IP rights ought to be registered. Uh, industrial designs are like patents, it's, um, uh, so I won't address that specifically. And then trade secrets and confidentiality. There's no registration process. You need to do that by agreement and then your, your protection that you have uh, um, can last forever so long as you enforce your rights. So confidential information is information that has valuable from not being generally known and uh, that you are making efforts to protect as, as uh, not in the public domain or not publicly known. It's, uh, once it's in the public domain, um, unless you're suing somebody at the time, there's no going back. Okay, so what's the most applicable to and valuable for your particular business? I'm going to say your business's most valuable assets, other than your people, are your intellectual property and your reputation and goodwill. So you need to own your business's work product, which is the copyrights and inventions, and uh, make sure that uh, because your trademark represents your reputation and goodwill, it's what your customers use to identify you versus your competitors, it's really important that you have the rights to that. So I'm going to have some specific examples as we keep going. So I, in the trips, traps for the unwary. So uh, one thing I come across a lot is people thinking that they're, they've registered their business name in Victoria or, or wherever they have in, in, uh, uh, when they incorporated their business uh, and that's, that gives them protection. Well, that's not actually the case. All it does is protect your name on the corporate registry and no one else can adopt later a confusingly similar name on the register but they can still trade under that other business. And so the example I used before is, you know, Mike and James's inexpensive Coca-Cola Coca -Cola bottling company. We could register that name in a corporate registry, but the moment we tried to do business, we'd be in deep, deep, deep trouble. So that's one, is you do need to register or protect your trademarks. Uh, failing to enforce your trademarks makes it unenforceable over time. So uh, it, trademarks indicate the source of the goods, who, who the, the source of the good is and if, or, or the service. And if, if it points, if I said one particular name and it points to two or three different people, there's no, no problem for a fourth person to come along or a fifth and a sixth. And so trademarks lose value as more people adopt similar marks. Your best protection is a very distinctive mark that you police. So lots of things we think of as generic names started out as trademarks. Uh, you know, Escalator, uh, Kleenex, um, I, Yellow Pages in the US, there's lots of those. So, so uh, protecting your mark as you go along is, is part of, the, part of your, how you protect your value. So if, I, if you were a web designer and a logo designer, I would say to you, make sure you own your work product and you give people a right to use things. Uh, as a business owner, you'd like to own that stuff yourself, right? And so uh, you shouldn't expect to own um, the website design that somebody's created for you, like the underlying code. They use that code, they reuse that, they're gonna license you to use that. If they've done a unique logo for you and just that one particular logo, I, I think it's fair to say that as you as the user of that logo ought to own that logo. So then we're talking about copyright now. So that copyright you could enforce if people start copying your logo and using it, but you need to own the copyright in order to stop the copying. Now, you use it as a trademark, your rights arise from use. You can still sue people for trademark infringement even if you don't own the copyright. I'm maybe making it too complicated there. Does that make sense? Okay. Is that if you, when you register a logo, and by that I usually mean a trademark that's a design, you want to use that design as you registered it. I'll come back to the variations in a sec. Because your enforceability of your registration, ha you have to have the registration and you have to be using the registration to really have an enforceable mark. So always use the mark as you registered it on your goods and services. Now if you don't have a logo that you're always going to use, a particular design, you want to change the fonts, you want to monkey around with things, and you have a distinctive couple of words, I would say register the words alone, barefoot contessa, all caps, and then however you use that in different fonts, one word above the other, uh, in a logo design, that's all use of the words alone mark as registry. That's kind of the convention in the law. So, so uh, registering the words alone, unless you're really wedded to your particular logo, is an important way to look at it. And I, I guess what I would say is, when you think about registering the logo, you say, well, if somebody who was a competitor of mine used a similar logo, would I freak out? then you register the logo, right? But if you're not, if your logo is just like one word above another and a swoop, 
you know, then, then don't, don't worry, don't sweat the stuff that's not highly distinctive of you. So then, even within logos and everything else, you can have a certain amount of variation from the registration over time, so long as still the same basic idea, the same basic feeling, the same, same basic mark is being conveyed to people. But I, I'd be very reluctant to mess around with that very much. You have to look at uh, where you want to spend your money and what the next best use is. So if you're uh, TELUS or you're UPS, you register the words alone, you register each design you use, you register every tagline that you use, even if it's only going to be for a year or two. Uh, you register your mark in color, the colors you use, and you register it in black and white just in case you use a different color. Are these all trademarks? All separate registrations. Of trademarks. Yeah, of trademarks. But you don't have to do that. I mean, I would protect the stuff that's essential to you to protect. So your words alone, unless they're completely descriptive and not registrable. So register the words. If you've got a logo that is distinctive as compared to other people's logos, I would register that too, because if someone else took that logo or something very close and used different words, would that make you crazy? That's the, that's the test for me. They're, they're distinctive in your own particular sliver of the marketplace, right? For the wares and services that you sell, it's still distinctive. So it's good to protect it for that. But like the US trademark registry has, you know, every mark is used multiple, multiple times. So, uh, um, I mean, I think ideally when you're sitting down and first dreaming up your business, it's good to think of something that's distinctive of you and you alone. And if somebody types that into Google, you will come up, right? It'd be great if you could have something uh, that unique. Like a portmanteau, I always like to think, which is a combination of two words that you jam together. Like somebody came to see me years ago about with a, t a tray. It was also a table and she called it a treble. I'm like, Someone finally took my advice. A portmanteau, you know. Something really unique is a great way to go. But if you're, once you're in business, you've built up your goodwill, you're not going to change now. So it is, we're going to register it so that you get that name for your sliver of the, of the business world. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. Uh, so we t I haven't really talked much about when you spend money on this, but we talked about when rights arise. So... It's not your first use of your money, but as you start to think big, it's a very good use because otherwise you may be forestalled from, from carrying on a business in some places. Others in Canada will be able to use the same name you're using in a different part of Canada unless you have a registration, is the, is the classic example. Okay, so the last one I'm going to say for miscellaneous traps is failing to own the work product of your employees and contractors. Like I said, you own their copyright if they're doing it in the ordinary course of their employment, but you don't own their inventions. You, uh, the contractors, you don't own anything that they produce unless you have it in writing. You don't, uh, there's almost no rights arising that can be transferred in copyright works except in writing. So if you're using contractors for anything, you need to have an agreement in writing that gives you title to their work product where it's appropriate or at least a license to use it in the, in the scope of the license in writing. Law, well-developed law about some of this stuff. So it, it just we're talking about social media and reusing images that you've taken maybe in the course of employment or whatever. And so uh, um, a couple of considerations here. One is that the person who takes the photograph owns the copyright, except if they're an employee, in which case the employer owns it. But that doesn't apply for all photographs. Portraits, the person being the, own, uh, having the portrait taken own, is owns it, unless you have an agreement to the contrary in writing. Uh, there's also rights of publicity and personality that people have. So. If, uh, if you just have a photograph of somebody's lips, it's highly unlikely that they can say, hey, those are my lips and everybody on the planet recognizes those and you should take that down because you're violating my rights of publicity and personality. But if you use their whole face, say, mm -hmm. and you've got nothing in writing, then, well, maybe that was a portrait or maybe you were violating their rights of publicity and personality. So I would say, uh, yeah, I'd do something in writing when I was doing that. I've, I've had that exact situation arise where, uh, um, you know, we did have an agreement in writing, we still had a lot of trouble. So, so I would worry about that. Yeah, well, if they're not, I'd, I, like I said, if they're not, if I, you, she's going to make me hurry. I, Last slide. Given time, yeah. And then we okay, have. five intellectual property takeaways. This is the bonus <laughs> slide. Uh, pick a distinctive yeah. mark that points to you and you alone and is memorable. Search for infringement before you start using it. Uh, make sure, uh, use your marks properly, i.e. as registered, and police your marks. Uh, get invention assignments from employees and copyright and invention assignments from contractors all in writing. Make sure you own your work product and license or don't assign it. Uh, protect confidentiality by agreement and uh, marking. So you're marking things confidential, you're enforcing your confidentiality agreements. 
Uh, consider uh, the reach of your business over time. Most IP rights arise are enforceable on a country by country basis. And finally, an IP lawyer or agent will generally meet with you to discuss your idea or issue without any charge or obligation, at least once. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.